if you are new to the channel then subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for further notification okay student welcome you all to this new lecture in machine series so today again we will be solving five questions starting from question number 171 to question number 175 okay then let's try to solve these five questions okay, question number 171 a three phase 10 kilowatt 400 volt 4 pole 50 hertz star connected induction motor draws 20 ampere on full load it's no load and block total test or data are given. So no load test is given, block total test, it is drawing 15 ampere current, but full load is 20 ampere. So you know, no load test will give me the coal loss and this give me the copper loss, but this copper loss is corresponding to this 15 ampere, not this full load copper loss. So you have to calculate full load copper loss. Neglecting copper loss on no load test, so no load test generally neglect the copper loss and coal loss in block total test, what is our normal convention. Estimate the motor full load efficiency. Full load efficiency means you have to find full load copper loss. Coal loss will be remaining same. So you have given coal loss is equal to 10002 watt and copper loss. Full load copper loss because uh, for 15 square it is because copper loss is directly proportional to I square it is 762. So for 20 square it will be how much you have to calculate. So if you calculate your full load copper loss will be equal to 1354.66. So this is your full load copper loss and coal loss is always fixed. So therefore it efficiency will be what is full load output? Output is 10 kilowatt. So 10 into 10 to the power 3 divided by output plus losses. So which will be approximately equal to 80.92 that is 81 percent which is your option B. Now if you come to question number 172, the electromagnetic torque TE of a drive is connected and its connected load torque TL are shown and below out of the operating points A and B, A, B, C, D, this table one is. So electromagnetic torque E is that is the torque that is developed by the motor and TL is the load torque. So now for stable point, normally at operating point what happens, whatever torque is generated, same torque is equal to your load torque. So that's why it is at stable position, it starts rotating. So at normal operating point, both are equal. That means these points A, B, C, D, at all these points, it are normal operating point. Now, they are asking which one should be the stable one. For stable one, if you increase your speed, suppose if you have somehow your increased speed has increased, suppose your load has decreased, that's why your speed is increased. So if your speed is increased, what you need, your electromagnetic torque, that is generated torque should be less. If it, because it is increased more than your op required, suppose due to some fluctuations, due to some variance, somehow the speed has changed, but load is not changed, that stable position should be maintained, that is suppose A, suppose this is the stable position. So TL remains same, so by some disturbance speed has increased. So what do you need? You need your electromagnetic torque should get reduced, because if it get reduced, then the speed will come back to its original position, the torque that is generated by the machine. So that is why if you see, and similarly if your speed is decreased, TE should be greater than TL. So in that case, if suppose one by one, suppose speed is increased, so TE should be less than TL. So when your load torque is more than your electromagnetic torque, then automatically speed will come back to its original position. Now somehow speed has decreased. Now you want your generation should be more. So your generated torque should be more than your TL. Now you see in which operating points it is possible. Suppose figure one, if you go beyond this operating point A, if your speed, if you increase your speed little bit, if you see your TA is greater than TL. So obviously it will bring it back to its stable position A. So it will again try to come back to A. If you reduce it by a little bit, then your TA is more. So it will increase its speed. So again it will try to come back to A. So it is a stable position B. If you increase your speed little bit more, then your TA is more. So which will, which will tend you, which will increase your speed further more. So it will keep on increasing. So it will not be a stable position. It will not come back. Because if you go beyond B, your TA is greater than TL, so it will keep you on increasing the speed. Here, if you go beyond that speed, your TA is less than TL, so it will bring it back to C. Similarly in less, similarly in D also, if you go beyond your normal operating point, your TL is more. So because TL is more, it will bring, TA is less, it will bring the speed to its original position. Similarly for less, TA is greater, because TA is greater, so it will try to bring again the back in B D position. So it is option A, C, D. So that is your option A. Now if you come to 173, a three-phase square L cage induction motor has a starting torque of 150% and maximum torque of 300% with respect to its rated torque. The rated voltage and rated frequency, at rated voltage rated, neglect the stator resistance rotational losses, the value of slip for maximum torque. So what is given, your starting torque is equal to 1.5 of, suppose rated torque is T, 
and your T full load is equal to 3 times 300 percent means 3 times of T so you can easily see your starting torque by maximum torque this is not full load this is maximum torque divided by maximum torque is equal to 1.5 T by 3 T that is 1 by 2 now what is the formula for starting 3 into 2 pi ns if i am writing ns in rp if you are writing ns in rps or you can put a 60 if you are writing in rp no no issue so this into because it's starting your it, s is 1 so it will be e2 square divided by r2 square plus x2 square x20 actually into r2 this divided by your t max what is t max t max it will be 2 pi ns by 3 into maximum s s max into e2 square and you know at maximum torque t max your r2 is equal to when maximum torque so called when r2 is equal to sx20 so your, this will be r2 this will be r2 square so it will be 2 r2 square you can write so that your r2 square get cancelled and this r2 will come here so this 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 is actually 2 r2 square so if you take product it will be 4 r2 square is equal to s max into r2 square 4 r2 square s into r2 square s into x20 square now this r2 is the max uh, r2 is it is always same fixed but at maximum your r2 is equal to sx20 so in place of r2 you can write s max into x20 so 4 into s max square i am writing s only s max into x20 square is equal to s into s square x20 square if you take your x20 square out then it will be 4 s square minus s cube plus s equal to 0 or which will give you s square minus 4 s plus 1 equal to 0 you can easily solve this quadratic if you solve you will find 1 s is equal to 3.70 and 1 s equal to 0.2679 so obviously you know this one cannot be the answer because 373 percent slip is not possible so it is 26.79 percent slip so that is your option D. Okay, what is asked here? The three phase square L case induction motor has starting current of seven times the full load current. Okay, and its full load slip is given 5%. If an auto transformer is used to reduce voltage starting to provide 1.5 per unit starting torque, then the auto transformer ratio should be. So your starting torque should be 1.5 times per unit. That means on the base. So base is the rated torque. So that means it should be. 1.5 times the rated torque that is 1 point per unit means what is the base base is the rated torque rated torque is the full load torque so it is 1.5 per unit that means 1.5 into base torque and what is base torque it is nothing but 1.5 into full load torque so t full load so that is given that means it is given t full load by t starting is equal to 1 by 1 point now let us write the formula what is the formula for t full load it will be 3 into 2 pi ns every time i am not putting 60 because i am considering this is already in rps if it is in rpm then you put 60 there is no issue so this is my full load torque and what is starting torque starting torque 3 2 pi ns s is 1 now here starting torque because you are using auto transformer so you will not, not directly give you e2 you will give some portion because you are giving reduced voltage starting so it will be x into e2 that ratio that x they are asking this square r2 square x20 square because they have directly given you that starting current is seven times the full load current so what you can do to introduce that current for a fraction here because otherwise you cannot cancel this x square this portion so you yeah, let me divide it by this and let me put a bracket here so it will be s square by this so it is one by this one and this this are already cancelled you cancel all these stuff now what is this this is nothing but i2 square that is i full load so it is i full load square divided by if you keep this x square out and this one is your i starting square because i is e by under root r square plus z square that is x square that is e by z and that is equal to here nothing will be there only s will be there okay that is 1 by 1 1.5 as they have given this is the full load s slip this is 0 0.05 they have given it is 1 by x square this is i full load by i starting torque because i starting is they have given starting current is 7 times so it is ifl by 7 ifl 1 by 0 0.05 so fl fl get cancelled that is 1 by 7 square you can calculate x from here 
So if you calculate your x will come 78 point this much percent in terms of you multiply by 100 it will be 0.7825. So that is your option C. Now on the same question, you now the question is if the star delta transformer is used to start the induction motor then power unit starting term. So your TST will be equal to now or TFL, you, you have already seen what is TST by TFL, TST by TFL is ultimately coming to this. So in case of start delta what is the voltage is reduced by root 3 times. So that means it will be x squared root 3 because the difference is of root 3, you start to delta delta to star you have already seen. It is reduced by root 3 times, it, will, it is 1 by root 3, so it will go up there, x is here 1 by root 3. Because you have read, if you multiply by root 3, then it will increase. So, start delta is also starting, it is reduced. So, it is the fraction by which it is reduced. So, it is 1 by root 3 as whole square that will go to root 3. And this is already given 1 by 7 whole square. And this is already given 1 by 0 0.05. So, from here you will find your starting torque is equal to 0.8167 of your T full load. That means 0.8167 per unit. That is your option B. If you like the video, then press the like button and please give your valuable comments in the comment section.